This is a relatively fast talk, it's about 15 minutes, but let's imagine this is a very, very important 15 minutes. Let's say this is the last 15 minutes on a Friday afternoon, and you are in charge of making sure that Commanda is actually running. This is the point of Cockpit. Cockpit's job is to allow people to not just visualize processes, Felix showed a lot of really good stuff about actually seeing the path and stuff, and that's fine, but really the power of Cockpit and why people use it is because we have all sorts of tools to indicate things are going well or badly. Right now, things are actually running okay. So let me show you what it exactly is running. Uh, it's this guy here. Here's a little process that we're interested in. Um, it is uh, called count create, and you can see that we have about 50 processes. It's a straight through process. Once it starts, it runs through it. Sometimes it, uh, it creates an account. Sometimes it says that this account already exists. And so it's quite easy for us to understand what's going on. And we have a service, which in this case is this runner here, okay, which is polling and is, which is starting instances with some data and getting back these 200, okay. So it's constantly saying, do this process for us, okay. And of course, this is, if this was our last 15 minutes on a weekday, then this is the perfect time to deploy a new version of our process. So right now we have this new version. Developers have said, here you go, this is going to work great, and it'll work even more efficiently than last time. So let's just deploy this. Okay, so this is the project that I created. I added some new code to it, and it's just going to deploy that to Commander. A really nice thing that's going to happen is that we don't need to mess around in versioning. It's going to happen automatically. We also don't need to tell our client here uh, that this is actually even happening because the REST call that it's using always starts the newest version. So actually, this guy will keep on creating new instances and actually doesn't even know a new version has been created. So um, that probably got deployed, I assume. Uh, yes, it did. Great stuff. So now we can go into Cockpit and take a look and see that, oh, that's interesting. We now have a process is running and we have two open incidences. So this is usually bad news. So let's have a wee look at our processes and take a look at what's going on. It's pretty clear that this is not good. We shouldn't have too much wait state in this process. It's a straight through process. So in this case, we're going to find out what's going on. So let's just click in here. Okay, so this is getting worse and worse, actually, because now we have seven uh, problems, okay? So that is means seven instances are stuck here. That being red seven means that seven of them have errors. And you can see here that this is our issue. Now, if I were in DevOps and I was making sure this runs, um, I can take a look at the incident specifically. I can then take a look at exactly what code has run and what has broken, that's all great if I was a developer, but as a DevOps person, I didn't make this. I'm just in charge of making it run. So this is actually not so useful to me right now. Uh, so let's just refresh this. How are we looking? Oh man, things are getting worse. Okay, so what should we do? So um, the very first problem is that uh, we are starting this process that we know errors. If we take a look at this, we can understand that one very important thing about it is that some of them don't. Okay, so only a few calls error. Uh, so five or six are finished. Another issue is that the ones that go this way actually don't have a problem. It's only the ones that go this way. That's where the error is. So one of the first things we could do is we could say, okay, well, that is a problem, but I'm going to suspend the process. Okay, what does this mean? It means I'm going to say this process is busted. I don't, I'm going to stop, freeze all the tokens where they are, and don't let anybody start any more instances of this process. Okay, that seems like a pretty big fix, and there we go, it's suspended. We now have this process frozen the way it is, but that is a terrible idea because now our dear friends that are calling this process are likely going to get a huge big error, and now they are getting this back, internal error. They're trying to start a process that's broken. Okay, so that didn't work. This has actually caused a bigger problem, so let's just unfreeze this and kick it back into action. Great stuff. So we really don't want to, yep, great stuff, so it's unfrozen, so our clients are okay, they're still starting it, but we're still stuck with our problem. Our problem, of course, is getting worse and worse. We now have 14 errors, is it? Ah, 15, okay, so even worse. So luckily, we do have another great thing we can do, which is because I only have the problem right there, I can actually say, well, I don't need to suspend the whole process, I just need to suspend this task. Okay, there we go. Now, the really important reason why that's so good is for two reasons. First of all, this doesn't affect these guys, okay? These processes still start. I can actually still start my process without any problems. Another nice thing is that also, if anything goes down here, 
it's fine. That's actually a perfectly fine route. That's actually never even touches the error. That's really important. So now if I refresh this, I should see that I have now 27, but some of them have not errored. Why? Because I suspended that particular job, which means the tokens are going to arrive at create account, and they're going to wait there. They're going to say, okay, until this thing is unpaused, I'm just going to sit right there. So we have two different types of states. We have 18 instances that have errored and a whole bunch of other ones that are just waiting. Now, unfortunately, we can't leave it like this. This is fine for short term, but we actually need to deal, some, deal with something that's, uh, uh, we need to actually uh, deal with this right now. So any ideas what a nice idea would be if this is breaking? What can we do? Fix it. Fix it is a very, very clever idea, yes. Uh, now, luckily, we have, we have a fixed version, right? We, yeah, rollback, exactly right. We wanted to get the old version back. We missed it. It didn't error. It's the perfect type of version. So luckily, any deployment you make has uh, a bunch of uh, deployments. Uh, deployment look like this. This one only happens to have one process associated with it. It might have multiple. So it looks like this. And this is our version that worked. Okay? And we want to get everything new back onto this. Okay? And again, we don't want to affect our, uh, our clients who are starting this process. So what we can do is we click redeploy, boom. And now this has now become the latest version, okay? Which means if I go back to process and I click here, ooh, 18 errors, this is getting worse. Okay, I click here, we should see no errors, okay? In fact, we should see a history of everything going through without a problem. Great, that's fantastic, because this is the new version. You can see here in the top left, there's the actual versions are. So if I have a wee look here, we see we still have version two, okay? Loads of stuff happened there that was successful, but we also still have a whole bunch of stuff stuck here. Okay, so there's our next problem. Our next problem is that we have a working version, so the client is gonna start these processes, not gonna have any problems, they don't know what's going on, but we are stuck with this, a whole bunch of states that are frozen in both waiting to run this and also have failed run this. So what would we like to do? Well, we would quite like to get this on the new version, right? Because that's where things work, okay? So let's have a look at that. So let's, the first thing is I'm going to, um, you can see here actually if you're, uh, if you're looking that a few of these are still active, the green ones there, and then down here are the ones that are. So we do have two pro processes that are not too busted. So now what we can do is we simply need to um, unfreeze this for now. It doesn't really matter. Great stuff. And now I'm, uh, oops, I've paused the whole thing, don't want that. Good job, okay. Yeah, it's fine, okay, super. And I'm gonna click this incredibly subtle button here. This button here actually shows us a really nice little uh, tool called process instance migration. So this is linked up the, pro the likely path between this one and this one, and they're saying you probably wanna migrate those guys from there to there. So next I'm going to select my instances. There's a whole bunch of them here that I can select from. I can use a filter to decide which ones I want to migrate, but I'm just gonna migrate all of them, okay? And I can do this asynchronously because I might be migrating like hundreds or something, and I think I will in this case, and then I click execute, okay. So what has that done? That's basically taken all the tokens from one version and put them on the new one. That's as simple as that, and it's doing this asynchronously, so we should see the batch is running right now, it's actually already ended, which means that, there we go, version three, they're all here. An important thing we notice is that number 33 matches 33 errors. Before I migrated, there was a much bigger number because as soon as I did, the ones that didn't, the ones that were suspended and waiting just flew through, okay? As soon as I migrated, they just continued on their way, but the errored ones are still in a state of error. Okay, that is what's going on. So they require some sort of, uh, somebody to try and come and sort this out. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm actually going to do that. And I can do that by selecting one of the errors and I can click on incidents and I can select retry job 33 times. So fun, right? But if, you're so, if it's Friday and it's, you've only got a few minutes left, we have five minutes before we can go and get a drink. So. It means that we would end up deciding, well, maybe batching might be a nice idea. So let's go to our batch operations. Okay, I know I, if I retry these, they will pass because they're now going to run correct code because I've moved them to the right area. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say set retry of jobs belonging to process instances. Great stuff. Uh, let's say, so this is going to set uh, to the retries. I'm only interested in ones in which the error status is open. Okay, so these are all my errant processes. Okay, 33 of them. And I'm basically saying, you guys get one more try to see if you can execute this code correctly. That's what this is going to do. And now I'm going to do that now. And execute. You can also do this asynchronously. And there's that job running. And now we should see that all the errors are gone. OK, great. We ran that. And they retried the code. And now we're finally fine. And everything is right with the world. Uh, but not exactly. Because there are still, for some reason, 43 instances waiting there. That's weird, isn't it? OK, oh, that's, that's not good. OK, so now we have a whole new problem. It's a very, very different problem, but and it's, it's, it's not terrible, though. Our problem is not that we have an error, but this is a straight through process, and these should not be waiting here. That's not good. Why aren't they executing? And this is a big question. If I refresh this, we should see how's things going now. OK, again, getting worse. OK, we have 44 waiting here, and we have 16 waiting here. So what has happened? Well, basically, like Felix showed you guys earlier, I have this guy here running a Java class. Same here, but these guys are external tasks. These guys are actually waiting to pick up work. And clearly, because this work is sitting here not being picked up, it's down. Some, some system that's picking this up is not working. So it's not technically my problem, but I'm a very diligent person, so I'm going to have to look into this. And it is getting worse. So what we can do is I can go to this little guy here. Here's a little JavaScript worker that Felix would have shown. It sends emails. OK. This is our problem. This guy has gone down. And a really nice thing about this is to get this working again, OK, great. It's picking stuff up. It's sending emails. But there's quite a lot of them. OK, they piled up quite a lot. So the really cool thing about uh, these external workers is they're independently scalable. So because I want to clear the backlog, I'm just going to create two of them. So now we're getting stuff done in double the time. and. If I refresh this, that should have gone down. And it looks like it's gone down to zero. Hmm. OK. Oh, we got one left. OK, great stuff. So now we are happy and jolly. Everything is working. And now I can kill off my other worker. They don't actually need to do this stuff. And everything is fine. And that is, yep, yeah, bang on time. We have managed to save the world in about 15 minutes, and now we're absolutely fine despite the various catastrophes that happened. Uh, so the point of this little talk was just to show the sort of the features that are going to be very, very common problems that everyone's going to come across when you're orchestrating external systems, and that Cockpit has a whole bunch of ways of being able to solve these problems, and quite quickly as well. So uh, similar to, uh, we're going to have a Q&A session, of course, at the end. I showed you guys a tip of the iceberg, really, of this. So if you have any other questions about how this works or anything else, just let me know. Um, and then I think for you guys, is it coffee break now? Yeah, and also you can approach me coffee break as well. Okay, thank you very much.